Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and I'm back today with another comic style painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be painting a Planet Eater Belchers from Privateer Press's Monster Apocalypse. Privateer Press was really cool and sent me some pre-release copies to review of their Planet Eaters and Guard starter boxes and, and I decided I wanted to use my comic book style of painting with these because they are very comic book-esque characters. You know, they literally had a comic book run with Monster Apocalypse First Edition, so it just felt really fitting. So I'm using a non-standard color scheme for my Planet Eaters. I'm going to be doing sort of a green flesh with silver or metallic armor and then some purple accents. I'm going to just lay out the colors I'm using right now, show you what that's going to be, get them ready on the palette. And of course, I'm going to be relying pretty heavily on black ink for all of the comic lining and hatching. So the base coat for the flesh is going to be some Vallejo Game Color Sick Green. And then I'm going to be doing some Reaper Dungeon Slime for the highlight. I'll also be mixing these two colors for a mid-tone. I'm also going to get some P3 Moro White ready on the palette because I'm going to use that for highlights. Now for the grays, I'm going to be using some Citadel Mechanicus Standard Gray and Administratum Gray. Now I actually found that the Mechanicus Gray was a little bit too dark, so I ended up mixing a little bit of Administratum into it. So you'll see that here where I just lighten the color up a little bit as I use it. So one of the things to consider when you're designing your color scheme for comic style painting is that you really want to focus on very bright high contrast colors for your base coat because you're going to be bringing in a lot of black ink up to almost I'd say 30 to 40 percent of your model is going to end up being black in the end and because of that you want your colors to really stand out because there's going to be so little of the actual color left once you get all that black on there and also because you want something the black stands out very well against if you had a really dark tone as your base coat the black won't be as noticeable and that sort of takes away from the power of this painting method so you want to start with a fairly bright color, I would say, you know, in a traditional base coat layer highlight sort of mindset, you want to start with your layer color as opposed to your base coat color. Now for the purple parts, I'm going to be using a little bit of Vallejo Game Color Hexed Lichen. And just a small dab of Vallejo Warlord Purple. Now aside from that, the only other color I'll be using will be the Black India Ink, which I will bring out when I'm ready to use it. So I'm going to begin by just throwing down some quick base coats here, starting with the Vallejo Sick Green. Now you can see I'm doing this as a fairly sloppy base coat because it's the first one going down and it's also the most voluminous, you know, it's probably 80% of this model is this one color. Just makes sense to really kind of rush through it, get it down, and then be more precise with every other color. Now there's technically a little bit of flesh in around the eye here, however I'm actually going to fill that entirely with purple so it gives the illusion that the eyes are glowing just a little bit. I'm actually going to do that right now. And then there's this little crease here as well, I just like to work the purple in. And this gives the effect that the armor is powered or something to that nature. And last, of course, is just getting down the gray base coat. So 
So as I mentioned before, the Mechanicus Gray is actually just a little bit too dark, so I'm going to mix a little bit of Administratum Gray into it to get a little bit of a lighter color. Now the transition between the green and gray areas here is actually going to be very heavily inked with black. So if you spill a little bit, if you get a little bit of, you know, the flesh color onto the metal or vice versa, it's probably not a big deal and probably not even worth correcting because you're likely going to be just painting over it with some black ink momentarily. Of course, I don't expect that you're going to be using the same colors as I am, but the inking is going to be at least relatively consistent in how it's applied, and so the same logic of not fixing your mistakes here would still apply. Right, and that is the base coats all down. It went pretty quickly. This is a fairly simple model, which is also why Comic Style works so well on it. Comic Style really lends itself very well to models that have large sort of open details like these. All right, so we're gonna begin now doing some highlights first. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna just mix the two greens together here to get a mid-tone. Now here I'm going to sort of emulate the fact that there might be more folds in the skin than the sculpt actually has by just creating some extra linear highlights like that. So if we just, you know, leave the paint broken up a little bit, you kind of imply some extra detail to the model that's not there. You can see we're doing very big, chunky highlights, and that's really... One of the really fun things about comic style painting I find is that, you know, so much miniature painting is about doing small, precise work and, you know, getting perfect, smooth transitions and blends. And then comic style just takes all that and just throws it away and tells you to use big, chunky brush strokes and not blend anything. And it can just be a very fun variation on your normal paint job. Just because you get to do a lot of things that we're almost taught are taboo in you know, traditional miniature painting. And now not every single miniature is quite suitable for this kind of painting. You'll see that I'm going to say this character, this model, has very big open details. And by that I mean um, he's not covered in a lot of little doodads and baubles. There's not 14 tiny little skulls I need to outline or highlight. You know, I'm basically doing all my highlights on one big continuous piece of flesh right now. 
and miniatures that sort of have this, you know, openness to their sculpt that are, you know, comprised of these sort of larger, more geometric details just seem to kind of work best with this style of painting. It's not to say it can't be used on more detailed miniatures. It certainly can. It becomes a more involved process the more small detail you add. And then the black lining just becomes more and more challenging. So now I'm going to come in with the Reaper Slime and add a second set of highlights here. And you can see I'm going to be much more specific with where these ones go. Bring a couple of these a little bit around the front. And again, I don't really care if, you see, I'm not doing any sort of blending. You know, these are just single brush strokes, really. Just depositing a large volume of a bright color. You know, large visible brush strokes like that. You know, in a lot of ways, we're taught to avoid that in more, I guess, traditional miniature painting. And yet they're a very common facet of, you know, regular traditional art as opposed to miniature painting. You look at any painting by any great painter and the brush strokes are identifiable to the point where, you know, scholars can identify a forgery based on the shape of the brush strokes. They're not ashamed of them. They're not trying to hide them. And we, in miniature painting, I think kind of do our best to get rid of brush strokes to pretend they're not there. Whereas in this style painting, in comic style, they lend to the comic sketchiness of the miniature. They make it look more hand-drawn. And that's the illusion we're going for. We want this to look like a hand-drawn, like it's leaping out of a hand-drawn, hand-inked comic panel. And for that to be the case, we want, you know, as much authentic, you know, brushwork and pen work as possible. We want it to look a little bit, you know, manual and sketchy and like, like there was a human behind it, you know? We don't want it to look mechanical and precise and perfect. We want it to have flaws and have brush strokes and lines that wander and some splotches of ink here and there. We want different things from this technique. And what I love about it is those things just make it more fun. They make it easier to do. They make it more accessible. If nothing else, even if you love regular painting, if you love miniature painting, which I absolutely do, I thoroughly enjoy miniature painting in many of its forms. Comic style is just this very welcome break from it. It's it's just so distinct. It feels like I'm doing something different. It feels like, to me, it feels more like drawing on paper than painting. Now, finally, I'm gonna bring a little bit of pure white over, just add a touch of slime into that. And this is just gonna go into a couple places. So this is almost pure white. So bring a little bit of this towards the top of the model. There is the green aspects basically done, except for, of course, black lining around them. So before I work on the gray any further, I just want to get the purple parts done. So to do that, first I want to bring in just a dot of pure white into each eye. 
And the reason for that is just that it's going to make the Warlord purple just pop a lot more. It's going to provide a sort of focal point for it to work over. So I'm going to grab the Warlord purple next. And first I'm going to try and work it into these little creases. Now right now they're the darkest part of the model. But once we start bringing the black in, they should be much more prominent. So now I'm going to bring a little bit of that Warlord purple over that white spot. And now you can see it shows up a lot better. I'm going to come with just a little bit more white again and basically repeat that dot. Okay, that's it for the purple. It's pretty low key. So I'm going to move on to the gray. So I'm going to work straight into the administratum gray here. So my goal here is to leave probably about a quarter of the gray in the darker color and sort of just bring this into you know, roughly the top three quarters, top two thirds in that ballpark. So I'm leaving just a little bit of the dark gray behind. Now a little more on the uh, sort of downward facing surfaces here. I'm basically painting a highlight, that's really what I'm doing. It's just not smooth at all. So now I'm going to mix a little bit of this, but half and half with the Moro White. This is going to be a little more of an intentional highlight now.
And finally coming with just a little bit of pure white. Now it's already pretty cute like this, and you honestly could put this on the table, and it works. You know, this is effectively a fully painted miniature, but it's not where we want to finish this style. So the secret ingredient to the comic style painting is, of course, black ink. In this case, using some De La Rowney FW acrylic black. And we don't need a lot. That's about two drops of ink right there. What we do need, though, is a very fine brush. The brush I'm using here is a Escoda Reserva size zero brush out of Italy. You know, it's still a Kolinsky Sable brush, like most brushes I use are, but it's got longer, thinner bristles and they return to a nice straight line. So what I want to start with is just outlining the different details. So I want to kind of work in between, you know, the feet and the, we'll call them legs for lack of a better word. They're kind of just stumps, but work along the back of the gray to isolate it from the body there. So one thing to note is that you know your brush starts a little bit wide and then as you lift gets thinner. So that can be pretty important with working the small details into this method of painting is that you want to start at the bottom of the stroke and pull up so that the stroke is always heaviest at the bottom where it's supposed to be blackest and kind of works its way upwards. Now there there was a little extra groove so I just ran a second line in along it. I didn't actually mean to do that yet as far as the tutorial went it just sort of did it out of habit. When I paint these, this style of miniature on my own, the black lining's a little less structured. I don't necessarily work around the model in a step-by-step -step process. I just kind of work the black lines in until I'm happy with them. And that might mean going around the model six or seven times, looking at it from different angles, doing different things with it. So I also want to just add a little, you know, line above that little groove in the foot. Okay, so those are done. I'm going to take the same approach and outline the, let's call it a helmet for lack of a better word. So I'm going to start at the bottom here and just bring the brush in, you know, between the bottom of the helmet and this top bit of flesh and then continue working my way around the model. So here the helmet has a little bit of thickness to it. You know, it stands off the skin a little. And so what I'm doing is working in behind that to completely fill that with black. So that when you view it from certain angles, it basically ends up getting like a nice black line around 
the silhouette of the helmet. You can even advance that a little further by grabbing just the very, very edge and painting it black like this. And what that'll do is even if you look at it head on, you'll get just a little faint black line, you know, around that piece, which makes it look very, very outlined. You can see I made a tiny little mistake here, and also a bit right here. We can come back in later with the greens and touch those up if they look like they're necessary. When you make mistakes like that though in comic style, just save them till the end, because once you start doing all the black inking, they might just kind of blend in anyway. They might not really be that important. Here I'm just outlining the bottom of this section of the armor. So now we're getting into the more head-like part, and this is where it just gets a little bit trickier. Basically, I want to kind of leave the teeth alone, so I'm going to come in above them and paint the upper jaw with a black line. So it does a really decent job of silhouetting the teeth. If you look at it from above, they might need a little bit of work. You can kind of bring the line out along the groove of the tooth. But don't, don't stress about it too, too, too much. So you don't want to accidentally paint the teeth black instead. Now there's a little groove here in the helmet, and I want to make sure we represent that. And same on the other side. And I've got two small grooves here as well. Now before I spend any more time in the helmet, I want to just work in the lines on the body, because that's obviously the bulk of the miniature. So we've got these two sort of prominent ridges, and I want to just work behind them first before I do anything else. So that comes all the way to the top of the model here. There's actually a small bit of a second ridge showing just there. And now you just need to flip it and do the same on the other side. So when we've really just started, you can already see though how much this miniature is becoming pure black. And even more so when you goof up and get some black where you didn't mean it, like that. And let's carry that again underneath this little plate. Onto the front there. All 
All right, now with that done, we can start to work on the folds in the flesh and so on. What I want to do is I really want to push the shadow in some of these areas. So I'm going to start from the bottom here and just pull these lines out from the bottom and kind of even just do a little bit of scribbling to fill it in like that. You can see, you know, all the lines kind of flow in that direction. So we're really just using the sculpt of the model to help set some of the direction of the painting. And we'll add some more black in for the, to really, really heighten the shadows later. This is just sort of a first pass. The purpose right now is really to, you know, line the details. Intentionally adding our shadows later will be a, just a separate step. Or I shouldn't say adding them, but exaggerating them, expanding on them. So here I want to just bring the black just into this little bit, just scribble it in, maybe pull out a little, little black lining, and then we can start to isolate the ruffles and folds over here. I'm starting to work in slightly more careful lines. You can see the brush strokes are getting a little thinner. And sometimes you're going to make mistakes, especially with the black ink. It's going to just either go where you don't want it to, or, you know, you're just going to bump into the model or whatever. And the problem is, ink is very, very opaque. So once you make a mistake, I mean, you can paint over them. It's not impossible to do so. But if you can learn to live with them, it's going to make your painting in comic style that much easier. So here are these little sort of bumps on the back. I just want to kind of, you know, outline the nodules a little bit, I guess. And I just want to spin this, give it a little look. I could probably bring a little more in here and maybe this back quarter as well. So I'm going to bring the line around. Same here, let's bring those just a little further. Okay, now that's it for lining. So the next technique I want to introduce is the crosshatch. This is where we start to give it more of a hand-drawn look by scribbling in some detail. So what I want to do with this is basically wherever there's some shadow, I want to exaggerate the shadow with a series of very small diagonal lines basically running at about 45 degrees to the line generating the shadow now some places like underneath here you know it's a very you know steep overhanging angle so I can really work a lot of these in and make it almost come to black
If you want to darken it up, you can just add two different lines from different directions as well. And sort of the closer you are to the bottom of the model, the more of these you're going to want. And the thicker they should be. Now, how much of this is too much is really up to you. It honestly just comes from practice. And I mean, your personal style as well. Where I might think I'm overdoing something, you may want to add more or vice versa. So here, just with the feet, I like to just give the bottom a quick underline. So again, you get a nice sort of sharp black line when viewed from certain angles. Helps maintain the cartoon or comic book illusion. Now there, those went on a little bit darker than I'd like. That's okay, we're just going to leave them there. Now that ended up much wider than I wanted it to be, so I'm actually going to bring in a little bit of lighter color again and fix that in a moment. So 
So one other thing that really sells this technique is something, I really don't know what else to call them, but let's call them doodles. And that's just adding little, just black ink service embellishments, and whether that's little dents, you know, maybe, you know, a ward or a bump. It's just adding some sort of like little hand-drawn squiggles and shapes that give the impression that this is hand-drawn, give the impression that it's not a mechanical creation that there's some imperfection to it or some implied imperfection. And you can do that a lot of ways. I like to do just little circles or jags, um, some little lines like that that might you know, be drawn to indicate a scratch. And you don't need to add a lot of them, especially a smaller miniature like this. It doesn't take a lot to sell the impression of hand-drawn detail. So now just I'm looking around here seeing that some of the green goes almost right to the bottom of the model and I want to make the shadows a little more dominant so I'm working just a little more black in. And one thing you'll notice right now is the black is very shiny. So we solve that later with just a quick coat of a matte varnish. Whether you use Tester's Dull Coat or Army Painter matte varnish or whatever your preferred method of doing that is. I usually use Army Painter myself, but it's certainly not the only product out there that'll do this. But that'll take almost all, if not all, of the shine out of the black ink and make this look flatter and even more hand-drawn at that point. So I'm just going to touch up that little bit on the helmet, just because I don't like how thick that black line went. Then you can start to take a little bit of white paint and work some highlights back in if you found any of them were sort of lost as a result of all this black. Which it's really easy to have that happen. I'm going to get rid of this black line entirely. I just don't like it there. So I'm going to do those paint this side just a little bit lighter than the other side. Kind of give a little more visual hint that there's a sharp edge there. I think that works as it is. Now here where I've tried to kind of hint at a scratch, I'm going to actually underline them with a little white, just make them stand out a bit more. Short of matte varnishing this piece, it is now done. So the intent with this painting is that basically from every angle this looks like a hand-drawn still from a comic book. And I think we're there. I think that's exactly what we've achieved, exactly what we wanted. There's no angle where this doesn't look like just like it's drawn on paper, which is absolutely perfect. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's plenty more here on YouTube. You can also join me twice a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday and Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, where I do stream my painting live. If you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com epicduck. 
Even giving as little as a dollar a month helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing. You can also help by hitting subscribe here on YouTube or sharing this video with some friends. Thanks a lot!